फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन वी आर लाइव नाउ गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी दिस इज डॉक्टर मनीष प्रसाद रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फ्रॉम असामी इंडिया सो कंटिन्यूंग आवर सीरीज ऑफ आस्क द मास्टर्स वेयर वी आर डिस्कसिंग ऑन बेस्ड ऑन केस बेस्ड सीनेरियोज सो टूडे इज द टर्न फॉर डेली स्टेट एंड वी हैव डॉक्टर प्रीतिश सिंह हेयर हु इज द स्टेट रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ असामी इंडिया फ्रॉम द स्टेट ऑफ डेली we uh, have a very uh, a group of a very learned faculty over here all representing assami india as well as uh, top institutions of the country we have dr manish dhawan immediate uh, past president of uh, assami india um, from sir gangaram hospital we have dr vikas gupta sir who is a professor at uh, the safdarjang hospital we have dr pritish uh, representing the uh, maulana azad medical college as well as dr uh, keshav who is also so from uh, malana azad medical college the topic for today is uh, software based uh, corrections as we know that uh, uh, elizrov methodology has progressed uh, to the present day where we can aim and execute the perfect alignment of the various axes which we uh, you know uh, endeavor so that the best possible uh, correction of limb deformities can take place so uh, without wasting any time i would like to uh, offer uh, the uh, speakership first uh, up to dr manish dhawan sir who uh, will be presenting his case series based on the topic so over to you uh, dr manish sir thank you thank you thank you dr manish prasad and thank you dr pritish for organizing this uh, webinar and uh, i am very proud that dr pritish is very active in delhi and uh, he is doing lot of cases so i'll be sharing my screen now one minute my screen is visible can you see that yes sir it is visible yes sir okay one minute okay and now uh, basically today's topic is ask the master so this is software guided realignment in periarticular deformities basically i'll be showing uh, cases in genu varam and valgum so i'm working at sir gangaram hospital i am a senior consultant and also professor at gripmer which is basically the institute in gangaram hospital i'm also teaching coordinator of national board and past president of assam india Uh, money the screen is not moving okay so just uh, two three slides to tell you about the history of hexapod it was basically uh, anything which has six legs both the upper and lower platform if they are connected by six uh, studs it can move in any direction so this was basically uh, you know discovered by stewart in his industrial platform now Gaw, Stewart, and Kappel—they basically combined and they put a technology to uh, get a uh, you know helicopter simulator for training of the pilots. So this is the picture of original picture of helicopter simulator. Now this uh, basically six-axis correction, uh, six-axis uh, theory is is helpful in many cases, uh, many uh, industrial applications like teleco telescope positioning. So it has six legs. and low impact docking for space vehicle basically when the space vehicle you have docking with the satellite so it can be done by that you can train your pilot in the simulator and more recently the in, uh, you know uh, the fighter aircraft if they have to be refueled in the air uh, with a tanker so it, this technology is used now in india we had four of these systems two are obsolete now like hexapod was the first one to be uh, introduced in india many years back it is a german uh, you know hexapod then suv came but now both of these have been withdrawn from the market now what, what is the uh, you know the most popular thing uh, in india is depth fix fixator which is developed uh, by india and the taylor spatial frame is also available which is uh, basically marketed by smith and nephew so taylor special frame was basically a uh, device this was, a, this was the first uh, six axis correction frame and uh, charles brothers basically uh, taylor brothers they basically devised this thing and they were the first one to use the mathematical uh, calculation for this thing 
for uh, deformity correction. They applied for their patent in 1995 and they got it in 1997. So TSF moved for from laptop based to web based program in 2002. So you have you require internet for this thing, and uh, you know. Uh, uh, Charles Taylor basically is a orthopedic surgeon, and uh, his brother Harold uh, Taylor is a uh, you know a mathematician and computer expert. Now, hexapod was uh, device was uh, invented by Professor Claus said We have uh, most of us have got trained by him when the hexapod was there in India. So this is a German thing, and it has the advantage over TSF that it uses Elizabeth uh, because TSF has its own ring. And uh, the telescoping rods can be adjustable down, down to 0.1 millimeter. So it gives a very fine correction. So this is the hexapod. SUV is the Russian uh, uh, hexapod, which was developed by Professor Leonid Solomon. And there were three people. Why it is SUV? Because it was developed by Solomon, Utikin, and Vilinsky. So Leonid Solomon is the orthopedic surgeon, and Utkin and Vilinsky are the computer experts. This is this system is independent of the web. So DevFix is our own, you know, Atam Nirbhar Bharat uh, Make in India uh, project. This is developed by Professor Dr. Mangal Parivahar, and I have, I am fortunate to be trained under him. So this fixator basically combines the hardware of Hexapod with calculation and software of SUV. It's a kind of a you know amalgamation of both the both of them. So this was basically the mathematical, this uh, software part is developed by uh, IIT Mumbai engineers and rest uh, has been developed by Mangal Pariyar. I was also fortunate to test this device. Be before introduction, they had sent this device to me. I did few cases and some changes uh, was suggested uh, by me to the pitka which was incorporated. Now coming, I will show you cases for all four modalities. But for a, a hexapod and a SUV, I'll show you one one case only because they are not now in the market. But at the end of this talk, we will be able to compare all the four fixatures. So now the case one uh, hexapod is genuvalgum. This is one of my second case, very long back. So this is a 25 year old girl with genuvalgum deformity, uh, more both sides, but more in the left femur and complaints of knee pain, instability, difficulty in standing for long duration. She had cosmetic issues also because she was going to get married and also started developing low backache. This was the, this is the case when I was in my learning phase. So this is my very, very early cases. So this is her picture in the OT. If you can see the left side, Janu Velgam is quite high and the legs looks very ugly. So if you see her x-ray also, you can appreciate, actually the line has come that, you know, the intersection line, but if you can appreciate, there are already arthritic changes happening in the knee joint. So I applied my hexapod and uh, this is the hexapod, sorry. I'll just take one up. So this is my hexapod calculation. And if you can see the x-ray, the calculation is happening. This after correction, I remove the hexapod and uh, connect it with the, uh, you know, threaded rod so that patient can do full weight bearing. And this is when I removed my hexapod. You can see the picture. You can appreciate that some mild uh, genuine algam is still persisting. It was my learning phase, but this is the result. And I think it's a very acceptable result. And uh, the patient was also very happy. Now, she is married also. She came to me three days back. She is happy. And incidentally, her, she has a child now. The child also has bilateral genu valgum. <laughs> so, so this is the case. So I'll show you one case in SUV. This is a 38-year-old male. He had a, uh, from Afghanistan, has a landmine blast injury in the both lower limbs. And he had many, many multiple surgeries in uh, Afghanistan. Now, this was the situation you can see on the left hand side is not able to walk. But now what was the problem that on the left hand side, there was a stiff non-union just above the ankle joint. So a skin was so bad that you cannot do any open surgery. So I just made a small incision and pressured the non-union, applied my SUV. And you can see that it's corrected and united. 
this is my calculation and you can see the leg now it is he is able to walk is happy so these are the two cases because they are obsolete now in india not obsolete otherwise but in india it is not available so we should not spend much time on that now i'll show you a few cases on taylor special frame and then we go to deaf pics now this 20 year old female with severe varus deformity of both femur and tibia. She wanted correction of her deformity, cosmetic lengthening also 2 inches in femur and tibia. Basically, the C type of deformity, you can see very bad deformity. And uh, she's very, she is short stator, uh, statured also. So, first we did our calculation. So, we drew our mechanical axis. And so, it was a medial mechanical axis deviation, you can see. So, first is that you have to see where is your mechanical axis. The second thing is that you have to now define in which bone the deformity is there. So, we first picked up the femur. So, in femur actually sometimes uh, it is uh, you know easy to do anatomical axis planning because uh, you know it is slightly easy and mechanical axis sometimes become difficult. So, I drew the uh, you know, the anatomical axis line. So, femur is curved and it is more curved in its deformity. So, we have to have multiple anatomical lines. So, I do my first proximal anatomical line. So, this is the first line. Then I did drew the, the lower one. And if you can see that there are two, they are not, inter, you know, is, these are not uh, meeting. So, a third line was drawn, which is known as basically the resultant line of the axis and then we see that there are two coras. So now if you start correcting the deformity at each cora it becomes very difficult because you know the your uh, assembly of the Elisra or Taylor spatial frame will become very cumbersome. So the basically to uh, you know uh, make it easy if you do any uh, you know corticotomy done at any place in the resultant anatomical axis line or the which is also basically uh, at any place uh, in this line the bone will get straight so this is one of the examples that anatomical axis planning can really help us so i did my corticotomy at the third line the resultant cora and you can see the femur correction happened i lengthened her also for an inch this is our, she is in her, uh, you know, uh, or this is the frame uh, for femoral correction. And the femurs are corrected. Now, next day I did the correction for the tibia. I applied the same Taylor special frame. I brought it down. And you can see I'm also lengthening her. This is the correction which is happening. And a quite an acceptable mechanical axis line has come. You can see that. Uh, Taylor special frame in the legs and you can see the final result. Final result is quite acceptable. So, coming to a uh, case for deformity, deformity correction in tibia with the Taylor special frame. Now, this 12 year old boy with various deformity of left tibia complains of being uh, complains of pain, difficulty in running, standing for long duration. Now, if you appreciate he is a chubby child, but if you see the left side, you can see the bowing of tibia. So, we did our calculation now. So, we drew our mechanical axis. So, we have medial mechanical axis deviation. Now, we have to, there is a method to find, if, we, if I have to do mechanical axis planning, I have to, I can have a method to, you know, uh, draw the mechanical axis of the femur. So, what we do that we draw the mid diaphyseal line and then we drop a line parallel from the center of head to the mid diaphyseal line. And from this line, if you draw a 7 degree line, it is the mechanical axis of the femur. So, first draw the anatomical axis line of the femur, draw a line parallel to it from the center of head. From this line, you draw a 7 degree line downwards. So, this is the mechanical axis of the femur. So, if you see the mechanical, the, there is no deformity in the femur, but you extend the line down, you see that it is going to the tibia. So, if now we draw the mechanical axis line of the tibia, 
So this line is now basically intersecting in the tibia. So, so we know that there is a deformity in the tibia. And how much is the magnitude is 15 degrees. So it's 15 degree, whereas deformity of tibia. Now we did uh, the, you know, draw, drew the line in the sagittal view, the lateral view. So everything was okay. So it was acceptable 85 degree, 81 degrees. So it was acceptable. So it was basically a frontal plane deformity. So TSR was applied. This is the correction which is happening. You can see that. And see, TSF is very, you know, patient friendly also. So only two rings can suffice the whole, uh, uh, you know, assembly. So he's very comfortable. You can see the alignment and you can see he has full knee movements. So post-surgery correction is also acceptable. Now coming to the def fix, this is the fixator which is most popular now. And Dr. Vikas Gupta is also uh, undertaking this course in Sabdajang Hospital with Dr. Mangal Priyar, I think probably on uh, 7th and 8th of April. Dr. Vikas is okay? 7th and 8th? 8th and 9th. 8th and 9th. 8th and 9th of April. So anybody who wants to do it, he can contact Dr. Vikas Gupta. So now, this is a 31-year-old boy with various deformity of left tibia. He had multiple surgeries and there is a plate in the uh, right hip joint also, distal femoral plate also. But he had problem in the knee. You can see the arthritic changes and various deformity of the left tibia. So this is the situation. He was very, very uncomfortable. He was working in a hotel. He had to leave a job because he was a steward. He can't stand for a long time. So I applied my def fix, did a uh, the uh, osteocorticotomy below the tibial tuberosity. This is my correction, corrected the varus. This is the correction which has been done. This is once I removed the frame. And then you can see the mechanical axis is quite corrected. This is once I remove the fixator, I always put the patient in the brace. Though PT will not work much, but it is something. Oh, oh. So this is after removal of the brace and you can see the final picture, extra picture. Now, this is a 34, case number six. This is a 34-year-old female with bilateral genuvalgum. Deformity of the bow, both knee and complaints of pain, difficulty running, standing for long duration. And, uh, you know, the, her walking distance was gradually decreasing and she is, her age is 34. So, this is our situation. If you see both sides, the new valgum, she is short, short statured also. See her walk, gait. There is also, if you see, there is slight external rotation also. There is some, if you see clinically also, there is some bowing in tibia also. So you can see the x-ray, this is the x-ray, there is also a bowing in tibia, both tibia also. So I did both sides death fix at one sitting because patient is, works in USA and she was not ready for one at a time because of the time constraint. So I had to apply death fix on both sides, which is very uncomfortable sometimes having Elizabeth in the both femur. But she had a you know lot of courage and a lot of patience, so I did it. So this is the correction which is happening. This is on the left side. So this is the correction in the femur. I have not corrected the tibia. This is the femur. I have removed the def fix. Now she is on the Elizra frame. You can see the correction here. Tibia has to be done, still remaining. But you know, you can see this, uh, you know, the leg is quite aligned. So I told, uh, you know, the patient that, you know, she has gone back and uh, I told her that, uh, please, we have to do correct the tibia also. But she says that I'm comfortable, doctor. I I will see after six months to one year because I don't have any problem. She has full knee movements also. So she's quite happy. She has joined work also. This She went uh, to US, I think, four months back. Now, this is a 39-year-old year old housewife with genuine welcome deformity and uh, in, uh, you know difficulty in walking and she had a, a deformity due to trauma at the age of 12 years so you can see this situation on the left hand side 
so you can see here need lot of arthritic changes so it is basically like lateral mechanical axis deviation so i use my desk fix this is our correction this is uh, she is walking with the once i remove the desk fix after correction now i recently removed her frame so i don't have the she has sent me this video so it is well aligned she is not putting full weight also so now this chart is prepared by me and you know i have compared all the four devices so hexapod the problem is that you have to use uh, rings of a specific manufacturer like pitker ring are only can be used with hexapod because if you use other rings it will not work because they have the same dimension the best part is with suv that it is independent of any manufacturer like suv you can use with any type of ring or you know whatever you can any combination because software you do not have to put the dimensions of the rings or the frame tailor special frame you have to use rings provided by smith and nephew is these are aluminum this is aircraft grade uh, you know aluminum and it is very expensive and uh, defix also you have to use uh, pitker ring only because it has almost the hard, hardware is as you know similar to hexapod so reduction capabilities are good in all of them like hexapod they say that you can do a correction of 0.1 mm but you know i have found that you know it is quite difficult uh, 0.1 mm it is uh, you know can be ignored so they are all all of four of them are good to excellent rigidity is hexapod the problem is that if you take take make the patient walk the studs can bend suv is very strong tailor special bit is very strong and because the uh, uh, you know uh, shan spins which we use the tapered uh, pins these are hx coated so they are very good for osteoporotic bones defix also is very good correction and uh, for hexapod you have to have knowledge of elizarov i think for all of four of them but as but tailor special frame has a precise instrumentation instrumentation provided by smith and nephew so it is very precise so hexapod is independent of in internet uh so you basically the software you uh, they load in your uh, computer so it is without internet so you can use it anywhere suv is also independent of internet but tailor special frame and desk fix both are internet based you have to have internet to do the case so tailor hexapod is expensive tailor special frame is very expensive and suv and desk fix are moderate and uh, hexapod is bulky because it is used on release row suv is very bulky defix also is bulky but tsv is very patient friendly and very light and aluminum uh, based uh, basically it is the aluminum is taken is aircraft grade aluminum when the basically the uh, uh, the aircraft uh, you know when they are gone for junk so they extract the aluminum and they make the you know the rings so what is the future now future the hexapod people of the germany they are basically devised the motorized device now further this is the israeli fixator which is known as orthospin hexapod in this uh, you know suppose you i have i operate a patient from nigeria i am sitting in india i do the correction i send the patient to nigeria now i, I have uh, programmed it so it is moving it is it will basically do it uh, itself suppose that when the program finishes i want want the fine tuning so what i will do that i'll tell the patient to send me the x ray i will uh, you know recalculate and send a message on his mobile so once the message goes on his mobile the mobile bluetooth and the fixator bluetooth uh, patient's bluetooth and the uh, patient's mobile bluetooth and the fixator bluetooth will get connected and the correction starts happening so this is totally motorized so recently i have a paper published uh, with dr manish prasad he was has been my fellow at gangaram so it is an index journal it's a web based journal journal of marine medical society of india so we have compared tailor special frame and ortho suv and we did a uh, comparative study so these all cases when dr manish prasad was there with me so he has to he used to keep all the data and we compared it so 
introduction like TSM and ortho S2, both are a six axis device and uh, both are very good for correction. So we basically did 20 patients of SUV, 20 patients of TSF and outcome assessment, the basically criteria or rate we have we you know, uh, studied the rate and accuracy of deformity correction, lengthening index, total lengthening achieved, time in frame, assessment of ability to perform daily acti activities or daily living, functional outcome using Asami score and complications. So results, both groups showed excellent correction of deformity in on planes and good functional outcome. TSF group showed less incidence of joint stiffness as well as shorter time in frame. Pain side infection are most common complication by major uh, and also sometimes we could not get the full correction. But pain tract infection was less in, uh, in Taylor special frame because of the HA coated pins. So conclusion, TSF allows for significantly smaller duration of frame wear as compared to SUV with comparable outcome in terms of residual deformity and much lower joint stiffness because rings are, uh, you know, less and the it's very uh, patient friendly also. The prerequisite for TSF mounting make, make the learning, crow, learning curve much steeper. So TSF is slightly difficult as compared to SUV. SUV is very, you know, you can say the doctor friendly device. And low weight frame and minimal hardware in TSF takes a better tolerator, which I've already told you. Cost of treatment is high in TSF. And uh, strict adherence of distraction schedule created by software is necessary for ensuring optimal uh, outcome or deformity correction by respective frame. Thank you very much. So Sir, thank you very much, sir, for this elaborate presentation. You almost covered uh, all the modalities, whatever are uh, available here. And uh, uh, so may I now request uh, uh, Professor Vikas Gupta, sir, since you are one of the senior experts, sir, for this uh, session. So your uh, be highly appreciated, sir. So, so good evening, friends. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Sir, your screen is visible. Uh, sir, uh, my request was if uh, you had uh, some uh, important things to share about Manish sir's presentation, sir, and then maybe if uh, someone among the uh, among who all of uh, us is present here, if somebody has any question to ask, we will convey it to uh, Dr. Dhawan and he may like to answer, sir. So before you go on to your presentation, sir, if you could make a few comments on... I would uh, like to also comment cases were really good and uh, we are we, we have been doing like uh, these cases for many years now since the introduction of SUV and he has made my job easy by covering most of the aspects which I'm going to cover but uh, let's hope and I I presume that most of uh, the faculty who is there right now has used this uh, hexapod type fixator software based fixator either suv or defix but uh, those who have not will definitely find it very useful so i uh, maybe uh, any questions to dr dhavan if 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 anyone has any question uh, uh, to dr dhavan jain sir anything sir would you like to comment no no comments I'll yeah. put, a, uh, put my question in the chat box, then we can discuss it later. Right, right. We can do that, sir. So, uh, in order to save time, sir, uh, uh, may I now request Professor Gupta to please go ahead with his presentation. So, what I will be covering is uh, cases similar to what uh, Manish has shown, with uh, starting with a brief history and the principles. So, the talk is about the software-based deformity correction. The first and foremost question arises, why we need this? Why it's not moving? So uh, first and foremost, uh, nothing to disclose. And uh, we do take verbal and the written permission for the photographs. So this, why, why do you need a system like this? At times, we see cases like this with multi-planar com complex deformities, deformities in multiple plane. And it's a very challenging task, especially for a surgeon who is not mathematically inclined. 
so we do need a system where we can correct all these deformities in all the planes simultaneously so if we were to correct with conventional elizero we would definitely we do we can correct this but we need frequent dismantling of the operators or maybe the frequent positioning of the hinges at the right place and multiple radiographic exposure like what i was doing probably a decade back like this was corrected to acceptable level but required extensive pre operative analysis precise use of hinges and along with translation units required correction of one deformity at a time and multiple radiographic exposure so now with introduction of elizero we all know that deformity correction has taken a leap and in fact i would say this is like a renaissance and with the introduction of new methodologies and technologies in this sphere of deformity correction as we have moved from analog to digital we all know we are all are using smartphones so why not move from conventional elizero to hexapod especially for deformity correction so this is the crux of my talk so this hexapod basically generic term the it is based on the principle of projective geometry that manish has already covered that it requires complex repositioning of object in a space which this hexapod system helps now if you go back to the history now we are using hexapod right now in this century but if you see the history it was way back in 1640 that pascal wrote his theorem on projective geometry on which this hexapod are based but somehow he lost it and but his student had cleverly copied it his name was philip it's like a movie story if you go back to the history and somehow this chessless and poinsett actually got this book almost 100 years later in one of the bookshops and refined this concept no which is known as chessless axes and what manish has already covered these stewart go and capel actually are the creators of the platform are the creators of the modern hexapod and they presented their research to the aeronautical society which is now known as a platform with 6 degrees of freedom to recreate combined movements of yaw pitch and roll basically three axes okay? and we have the six axes basically three movements in both the axes so taylor special frame tsf was developed by the these two brothers charles taylor and Uh, the herald taylor which we all know now and this actually set the benchmark its success and its result actually resulted in number of systems which i'll cover only two of them this suv which was introduced in 2006 and the defix which is made by our own dr mangal pariyar and marketed by pitcar tools okay which has unique advantages over the earlier systems now we all know that deformities exist in 3d space but what we see is 2d representation only we get apl lateral so software based hexapod frames basically what they are paired with computer software and they help us to calculate the deformity correction around a virtual hinge so we don't use a hinge like what we use in conventional iso it's a virtual hinge and we just need to put the data and the computer software helps us so angulation rotation translation and length are addressed simultaneously so you can correct all these deformities simultaneously or even sequentially if you want by the differential change in the length of the strut so by the change of these struts you can see that you can dock this bone segment or you can correct the deformities okay. so what do you need you need hardware like a elizero system which has a stationary base and a moving platform so this could be stationary frame proximal and this could be moving platform articulated connected by a six struts that's why we say hexapod so six jacks or struts each system has its own uh, uh, the type of struts and then you need a software which was initially key based like in suv now we have most of the systems are web based so you need internet so what you need is you need some parameters from the hardware that is measured on the frame so strut length triangle which were used in the uh, suv now we have the position of the struts in each number that you calculate the holes so depending on the frame you are using so you measure the data from the frame and you measure the you input the x rays in the software and you have to put the certain parameters so what you do you enter everything and you get a chart which is called calculation chart 
where it shows that how much should be the step length change each day, depending you have each day and how much you want. And the good thing about this is that you know, like this red uh, circle, this red uh, diagram, that you can see the correction. You can anticipate how, that it will be the final correction and you can uh, always find it just. So the yellow was the original deformity and the red uh, part will be the final correction. So that is a good thing about this software. So I'll show you some of the cases. So this girl, as you can see that, <laughs> She had a multiplanar deformity, complex deformity of the tibia that was falling, growth arrest, shortening, varus, and internal tibia torsion. Now, correct using a LISRO will require correcting each deformity sequentially. So what we did, this, this is my earlier case, like three, four years back, and I used the SUV, which was introduced at a time. But remember, friends, that SUV or any frame will not help you unless you know the basic principles of deformity correction deformity correction. So you must know, you must have attended the basic course. You have to map the ABC. You have to find the CORA point, which uh, some of the points were highlighted by Dr. Manish. So you know where is the CORA. So this was in the proximal tibia. Okay? And it's almost like a juxta articular. So this was the intraoperative PIX where I use this uh, SUV and uh, it's connected by these six struts. And the in the SUV, you measure the length of the struts and the length of the triangles, which these struts make. And you put all the six diameters, then the XA parameters, which I think uh, if you have done the SUV course, you will know. And once you enter them, you go through various steps. The, the software actually takes you to the various steps once you have done the previous step. And in the step 13, you get the chart like this. And in the SUV, there were like nuts, which showed how much to move. So at the end of that, one can see that I not only corrected the varus, as well as it, I corrected the torsion and the we, I gained also the length. So this, once you could see that once the required mechanical axis was achieved, you could always replace the struts with the threaded rods. Now rings are almost parallel and you can always dynamize. So this is her final correction and that's her gate. She's fully corrected and doing well. So this is the beauty of the software-based uh, program. Another case, again, 16-year-old girl with a complex deformity. One can see that there is not only torsion, but as well as varus, procurvetum. So the procedure remains the same. The mounting of the frame connected by the six struts, and then you do the corticotomy or the low energy osteotomy. And that's the X-ray positioning. I think uh, you know how you need to add the good AP and lateral X-ray where you should be able to see all these struts. You should measure the beam distance and you should put the markers. Okay. So these are all the requirements for every system. And similarly, when deformity was corrected, we changed the struts and that's our uh, follow-up picture. That's our correction and you could see our Gate, preoperative gate, and that's and that's just after the correction. Though there was some initial mistakes, so limb is well corrected. So coming to the defix, that our own indigenous hexapod, which has distinct advantages over the earlier systems, it's more user friendly. Moving the struts is easier for the patients or the parents. And moreover, you can do the residual planning in, if there is some residual deformities remaining. So I have found this strut much useful and simpler as compared to SUV. But having said this, that doesn't mean that SUV didn't work, it worked well. So it has connectors like Y, C clamp, and you can see the, the implants and the instruments which are used. So remember that you must be familiar, you, before you start, you should be familiar with the device. Okay? So that the parts of the hexapod should be, well, you should be well versed. And one most, one of the important thing is entering the correct data in the software. Anything wrong you have added, the outcome will be different. And probably the software is just like a blind. It will tell it the new correction level. So enter the correct data, and follow the principles of Elizro. So no matter 
the su will not, the hexapod will not uh, actually stabilize the frame so you have to follow the principles of Eliezer or the all principles biomechanics the destruction osteogenesis low energy osteotomy stability the ring size so this i am not going to cover so suv or a hexapod is basically helps to give us the parameters so follow the principles of the elizra and make sure that surgeons understand the support system of the potential family because the family must know that they are able to move or they are able to understand the frame and they they are able to move the struts correctly so family should be able to do the understand the details and should take part in the post op rehabilitation and the care of the frame similar to the elizra which requires spin side cleaning and the good practices you tell the patients or the parents to talk to the similar patients who have been treated okay. so presenting this 16 year old girl a case of wind swept deformity you could see the valgus on one side and a varus on the other side a sequel of rickets so she had a very awkward gait so this was like my first defix case so we used it like this was like a donation by the pitkar so we used like a free for her so this was our gate and uh, i did this map the abc and i could see the cora which is cora point which is just at the metaphyseal junction okay and this has shown by dr manish that how you calculate this so this is the parallel line and another line at 7 degrees which which makes the the proximal mechanical axis and this is the distal mechanical axis and they intersect at the cora so what i do which i have been following this is my own idea and uh, keshav was with me so what we do is we flex the knee to prevent the uh, to basically to lengthen the uh, basically to prevent the contracture and to decrease the knee stiffness so what we do is we pass the elizra wire through the proximal tibia and we connect it with a half ring and we connected this to the and what i do i do uh, femur on a fracture table and this i connected to the frame temporarily so your knee is flexed and your quadricep is lengthened while doing the procedure so you have a less knee stiffness knee stiffness remains but less knee stiffness post operatively so these are the basic steps how do you do it a proximal distal uh, wire is parallel to the knee joint and this is the frame and the you do the corticotomy that low energy corticotomy and what you measure from the now as uh, in contrast to suv you measure the ring diameter so you don't measure the ring diameter in the suv but you measure the ring diameter in this defix as well as the length and the position of the struts and again the same process you measure the source to film distance that is this a scaling object should be there a center beam like this you can use anything and you measure the uh, fixed and mobile segments should all be visible on the x rays so same process the the software is almost similar to the suv with some minor changes and you get the correction chart like this and you could see that this was the uh, picture and now the good thing is you ambulate the patients during the treatment and this is the final x ray on the right side mechanical x is centralized and that's her gate so i will plan her for the left side so this is bilateral genu velgum 15 year old girl she had a very severe deformity and we did one by one and you could see the how this uh, actually the correction is ha happening so that's her correction slightly over corrected on the left side okay uh, that's a case of uh, blounts actually an interesting case where uh, right side was done at some other place with the deformity is still persisting with the conventional laser so we did the on the left side we pre construct the frame like this similar to any laser frame for bone transport and uh, the procedure remains the same and that's our correction on the left side right side still there is a residual deformity now the last case another interesting case so we all think that varus deformity is there in tibia but you have to actually examine properly and get the proper x-ray scanogram so so when i asked my resident to get this scanogram so this was a scanogram was uh, you can see that this is not the proper way to get this scanogram you should have the pelvis at the same level so there is a shortening on the left side which should be compensated so this was reordered you could see that 
this is the way the patient should be examined and get the x-ray. So you could get the proper scanogram, both in the AP and the sagittal view. And one could see that once we have done the planning, that there is not only there's a five centimeter of shortening and the Cora point was just juxta articular, but we cannot make a corticotomy here. So we expected a translation. To, so that is the rule two, basically. So similar to the other cases of the femur, we flex the knee joint. And this is the position. And that's his correction. That's just immediately post-op. All these studs are visible. This, uh, this X-ray marker is there and the central beam. And you could see this red. This shows that final correction will be like this. And the patient continues to move. So what about the dynamization? So it's still the unresolved issue, though not recommended in the hexapod because the inherent micro motion exists even in a fully logged frame. And removing a strut or loosening can cause shear at the astrotomy site. So what are the tips? One of the tips is release the tension of the strut by releasing it from the Y connector and slide it back so that the bone takes now more load. However, what I do is once this becomes parallel, the rings become parallel, I replace struts with the threaded rods. So now you can dynamize like a conventional Elizabeth. So these are the, some of the ways of dynamizing it. So this boy, you could see that he had an excellent correction with restoration of length. And that's pre-op and post-op. And this is the recent video which he has sent. So to conclude that most of the pediatric deformities which I do are multiplanar in nature because of some of them are in physial, due to physial injuries. And introduction of hexapod has made my job much easier. In fact, it has melted the boundaries, both as far as severity and complexity. And future, as Dr. Manish has shown, there could be programmable self-adjusting struts which can be controlled by wireless technologies and some of them are still in the pipeline, similar to like Internet of Things, IoT, which we have at our home. Probably we can control this correction and movement by our mobile device connecting by Bluetooth. So thank you, ready for any question. And uh, I think we all know that Dr. Jant is doing hard work and we have a Samicon on 3rd to 5th March. And uh, as far as I know that he has made elaborate arrangement and there's excellent faculty. So I would request my viewers that they should uh, take part in this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for this uh, really elaborate presentation. Some very difficult cases, sir. And uh, the man behind the machine is equally important. It's not just the six axis fixator. You showed, sir, that uh, with proper planning and everything, things can be really achieved at this level. So um, uh, any of our uh, faculties has anything, any question? Dr. Rajesh Rohila, sir, good evening. Yes. Sir, you're here after a long time, sir. Uh, uh, any, uh, your remarks would be very valuable, sir. Uh, and, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, these are very uh, nice presentations. And uh, I would uh, like to ask uh, one question from Dr. Manish Dhawan, sir, that... Uh, uh, how uh, uh, how cortex how much cortex you fix uh, in the femur in adult adult patient of uh, distal one third like distal one third deformity in uh, this dead depth fix and what what is with the post operative protocol how you uh, advise the weight bearing because we are applying only two rings one one in the proximal fragment one in the distal fragment so how you decide about the weight bearing Can I answer it or uh, this is yes, question to Vikas yes. or me? No, of course, of course. Okay, my phone came to me. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, sir. Uh, question is, sir ke, how you decide the weight-bearing protocol as we are uh, fixing the uh, with the two rings only? And uh, this is a little bit uh, less uh, stable fixation may be there. Uh, so how you decide about the uh, yeah, weight? I'll answer you because I have done all four modalities. Onion, sir. Problem I faced when I started hexapod, I started full weight bearing. But what Onion. I found that you know the the 
inner cylinder, like there is a cylinder one and there is a piston inside. It started. Mm -hmm. So hexapod, then what I used to do that I used to initially start uh, toe touching, which I, and then once the correction is done, I always replace the uh, studs with the threaded rod. Yes. SUV, actually, uh, same thing I do that I start partial bed bits. SUV is quite a strong assembly because the uh, studs are also very strong. So strong, I have more weight bearing, but I always remove one the, <coughs> like the Dr. Vikas has told. It is a kind of dynamization. So I always uh, remove the studs, uh, put threaded rods, and then pay, make patient full weight bearing. But during uh, when the, this assembly is uh, there, I always insist on partial weight bearing. Taylor special frame is very strong, though it has only two rings because it uses HA coated pins. So it is very strong. So almost in Taylor special frame, you can start full weight bearing at the starting only. For DevFix also, what I found that it is quite strong, but there is a problem, you know, if suppose the start, you know, they have, you have a kind of a wire lock, twisted wire lock you is there with the each start. Suppose it gets come out, the whole stud will come out. So for uh, uh, this uh, depth fix also, I uh, prefer now I've started partial weight bearing. Once the correction is done, I remove depth fix and put the threaded rods. And then full weight bearing. Yes. This is my protocol. Yes. I can ask a viewers for viewers. If we use depth fix or any fixator, so what, uh, what, uh, how many, suppose in femur, in adult femur, with proximal ring, how many shan pins you apply with proximal ring? In the distal ring, ring we can use the wires and one, uh, one or two half pins. In proximal, how many you, you use? Yeah, see, it's a very good question. See, hmm. when I went for training for a Taylor special frame, they used to always tell me that five, fixation but a five i find very you know too much uh, so i always do four point of fixation like suppose in the distal part yeah uh, i use two shine pin one or two wires okay, okay. or i always you use four but mm -hmm. sometimes what happens that uh, in uh, you can use three also but i prefer four because if suppose your wire get loose or your shine pin get loose then the whole thing, uh, you know, gets uh, upset. So I always use four up, four down. It okay. is not that I will use less in uh, less fixation in upper or lower. I always okay. do four, four minimum. Okay. Or you can, you know, uh, suppose uh, if you have to improve the fixation, like if you are using two rings, you you have angled connectors, shine spins connectors. Yes, so yes. you can put uh, at an angle so it improves fixation. Mm -hmm. So that can be done. And I uh, tell the audience that always use tapered shine spin 5 mm or more. Don't use uh, the old type of shine spin or a, you know, something which is uh, less than 5 mm. Yes. Uh, one uh, one thing I would like to share that with the, the depth stick is a very uh, beautiful fixator, but uh, there is this, the sizes are different, large and small. So it's uh, it becomes some sometimes tricky because you have used the uh, some small sizes then uh, the correction may not be uh, satisfactory then you have to change to the large size. So this is the I think this is the small thing which we which the sir can. Uh, I had already mentioned you that this is a total. If you see the hardware is similar to Hexapod, the German one. And the German one also had three, but now they have provided us with the C clamps. Yes. So in the German one, we did not have C clamps. See, yes. this is an improvement over that. So what used to happen, the German hexapod, it was a very big problem. Like you have to connect uh, once the, uh, the studs got locked. So you have to replace it. But yes. in this, they have provided you C clamps. Yes. Okay. That's so that gives a benefit. But I feel that it works quite well and it is a kind of improvement over the German hexapod. Yes, 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 yes. And it Nine. is strong also, it is strong. The other original hexapod used to, the you know, the cylinder used to bend. Yes, sir. Hmm. Uh, okay. Can I? Sir, uh, 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 sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Please uh, go ahead, sir. No, no, anything? Uh, nothing. Uh, the questions, uh, there are some question by Dr. Jayanth in chat box. 
let me answer the second first. He, he has yes, asked, sir. can you lengthen the bone uh, once you have corrected the deformity with conventional uh, rods? I think this is the what you are asking. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think you can do this, but uh, because the, in a hexapod, you are correcting all the deformities simultaneously. So yeah. you are not putting the length in the initial program. Then you can correct it. But if you are putting the length in the software, then the software will calculate all the parameters, the angulation, rotation, and length simultaneously. And I think uh, it doesn't uh, add, it doesn't give you much advantage of replacing uh, this conventional rod Starts with rod rods. With over hexapod. And the second question was that uh, about the software. The software. I think a lot of problems, sir. Did three yeah. cases, and all the three times there was a different representative, and every time there was a problem in the software. Yeah, what you can do this, you can mail. You can mail the X rays and the hardware parameters. You can mail to their representatives, to the, the senior Pitkar guys, or to, to Dr. Mangal. And they will you send you the correction chart. Yeah, Divya nahi kara hai, baad mein correction ho. Dr. Jayant, uh, you are right, very right, because I have done ample number of cases in all four modes. I feel the DevFix software is slightly, you know, tough in that sense. Yeah. Uh, I have found it difficult because first, second two cases, I had to take help. So it is slightly complicated and I would request Dr. Mangal Pariyar that to please, you know, the next edition of the software. Basically, you know, uh, reduce the, uh, you know, complicatedness of the software because it's quite complicated sometimes. I still use the Pitkar guy to... Uh, yes, so he sits with us. yes, this is same with me because <laughs> SUV software was uh, easier than this. Taylor's version is very easy. But in this, there are so many parameters and it looks like very complicated. So I also, yeah. after doing so many cases, I take his help in DevFix. So you have the access of a person there. After that, he goes back to Nagpur or Nagpur se communication is becoming difficult. You get it with that. You get it web-based web it's always available. But if you do four or five cases, na, then things start uh, getting easy. It is uh, difficult than SUV. It is difficult than SUV, uh, this uh, SUV, the hex up, uh, hex up. Yeah. Or, uh, I think Jan, you can make your ID. Ask the Pitkar guys. Once your ID is made, you can access your cases. You can do okay. whatever. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So, uh, sir, can we move on, sir? Uh, Dr. Shem Shamshul has uh, his hands raised, sir. Uh, do you have any question, Shamshul, sir? Please go yeah, ahead so that we can move. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Manish, sir, I have a question with you. It's not related to the software base, but with the uh, complex new deformities that you are correcting with either the hexapod or Elizero. In the complex new deformities, we see that the rings are very near to the joint, the proximal and the distal. So what do you deal with the uh, knee stiffness that we get with it, sir? See, what I basically do it, uh, you know, suppose the patient is buying the depth fix or whatever. First, I correct the deformity. Right, Once sir. I correct it, then what I do that I do extension of uh, my ring. At the, suppose I've corrected deformity in the femur and knee is totally stiff. Right. The joint space is there. So what I do that and I second stage, I put a ring in the tibia and correct the knee flexion contracture, uh, this uh, deformity. Joint deformity okay. on uh, with the defix itself at the second stage. Right, sir, right, sir. So I always tell the patient that they go knee stiff hai, pehle correction ho jane do. Right, then sir. what we do that we we will shift this thing because we have a benefit ki aapne, we have this thing. So make ring niche laga ke and then usi assembly se hum aapko, uh, you know hum karenga. Abhi, I am doing two patients who had a totally complete stiff knee. I have corrected deformity. Right, right, now I am doing the flexion correction. That's a similar case I was doing with Elizero. This is a famous project. The problem is problem is that if you do two things, you will do two things. Suppose I do the correction up and also I apply another. You know, in one case, what happened because the fixation of the ring, because there is a big force. Exactly, sir. So the rings can move, the wires can move. So I had a loss of correction upstairs. That's in the that's okay, sir. So exactly, sir. Problem why you have when we have a deformity in the distal femur as well as probably the tibia, we are applying rings just uh, beside the joint, sir. The knee yeah. goes stiff. 
So, so thank you for this active participation, sirs. Uh, may I now uh, request Dr. Pratish to kindly uh, go ahead with his presentation. We have two more speakers, Dr. Pratish as well as Dr. Keshav. So, uh, Dr. Pratish, are you there? Yes, yes. yes Please Dr. go Manish. ahead. Thank sir. you, Dr. Manish. My PPT is visible. Can someone comment? Yes. Dr. Manish, my yes, visible. Okay. Thank you, Manish, sir. And thank you, Dr. Vikas, sir, for excellent presentation and giving a broad overview of uh, software guided realignment and excellent cases about software guided realignment. I'll present a case of Zeno Recurvetum. So, um, uh, basics and the uh, procedure and the complications and the process of software guided realignment has been excellently told by Dr. Vikas and Dr. Manish. So, I'll just simply present a case of Zeno Recurvetum. Before starting with my presentation, I will request all my viewers, all our viewers, to either register for this our annual conference, Asamicon 2022. It is being held in Indore, and the venue is Brilliant Convention Center, as Dr. Zain was telling, that it is the same venue where Parvasi Bharate Divas was also organized a uh, few weeks back. So we are looking for, forward for ex excellent hospitality and excellent academic feast. So deformities in clin uh, clinical scenarios are often multiplanar, periarticular deformities. And deformity correction requires reversal of each of the uh, component of this deformity. So periarticular different uh, deformities are a bit different and they are they also need very accurate correction in all planes. Conventional methods of deformity correction, they are cumbersome, time-consuming, and tedious. And sometimes we have to accept suboptimal alignment, contact, or orientation due to complexity of frame component. Because conventionally, we, we require uh, frame transformation for each component. For example, transla translation will require separate frame. Rotation will require separate frame. Angulation will again require separate frame. And additionally, load of radiology. Patient will require repeated X-rays. So I'm straight away presenting with my case. A 14-year-old male patient with a history of past history of septic arthritis early in childhood. He presented with abnormal gait and instability and gait. And uh, the patella was a bit big. So we tried, we ruled out active infection by both clinically as well as by lab test by say, knee aspiration and its uh, synovial fluid examination. Clinically, knee was silent. On X-ray, patella was large as compared to opposite knee. There was some reversal of the uh, tibial slope. There was growth rest at the tibial tuberosity and anterior tibial physis, possible growth rest. Femoral parameters, they were more or less normal within the normal lanes. While the posterior proximal tibial angle, it was abnormally high. It, it was increased. We sought scanogram. Scanogram on AP view, there was since there was a uh, Zeno recurvatum. So, and the views uh, was and the X ray calculation, uh, uh, scanogram calculations could not be done. On lateral view, it revealed again the uh, it confirmed findings of X ray. The posterior proximal TV angle, it was uh, accentuated, it was higher. And Uh, femoral parameters they were normal posterior proximal team angle was high as compared to the normal side it was uh, on scanogram view it was uh, calculated as 112 as against the normal value of 81 degree we saw hyper extension x-ray of this patient the tibial hyper extension was 24 degree entry femoral cortical lines it was not syncing with the tibial anticortical line of tibia. Usually they are they are in line with each other. Well, uh, in, in this case, there was hyperextension, so they were not sinking. Posterior proximal tibial angle on this X-ray was uh, finally estimated to be 120 degree as against normal degree. And uh, it's revealed that there is some cancelled fixed flexion deformity of around 15 degree. And Cora was found out to be metaphysical in proximal tibia. We operate, we plan this patient by software guided realignment. 
using Elizer Hour Ring Fixator, we applied three rings to one proximal and two uh, distal. Uh, proximal ring had at least three fixations and distal ring again had four or five fixations. We planned, uh, we did corticotomy near the Cora site and a fibrectomy was also done to uh, facilitate the maneuver, uh, correction maneuver. The correction was finalized with soft ortho SUV over a period of three weeks. It, since it was a corticotomy, a gradual uh, correction was done. Once we achieved the correction, uh, we replaced uh, ortho SUV studs with the uh, threaded rods. This was, this was his correction. So earlier uh, this hyperextension was reversed as normal uh, stance gait. During the course of healing, patient had some pin site uh, infection in the pins near the medial collateral ligament, but corticotomy can continue to heal. And there was complete healing in the corticotomy at around 10 weeks. After a dynamization, we removed that uh, hardware. And this was his final result. So a 24 degree of hyperextension with the Zeno recurvatum, it was corrected in a state stance. And this was his final result. It and results were also very good. This is another case of 12-year-old uh, male boy with old type 4 physical injury with 30, 30, almost 30 degree of virus mile alignment at ankle. He was again treated by Elizra ring fixator and corticotomy. So we could achieve correction in this space, uh, achieve in this patient. And it allowed it some lengthening also, as Dr. Zenser were also asking. So we can do some lengthening with Elizra ring, uh, this ortho, uh, ortho SUV or say uh, depth fix also. And after achieving the lengthening, we can replace the studs with the state roads. So it obviated need of a bone grafting also, and the procedure was minimally invasive as it was just a corticotomy. Uh, software guarded realignment in periarticular fractures, a patient of say proximal tibia fracture. This was a patient with who presented to us with delayed presentation of, because of her head injury and other pelvis injury and other things. So it was, uh, he was, she was treated by software, software guarded realignment. And this was his final result after healing. Again, a distal tibial diffusal fracture or periarticular fracture. It was an open fracture and which was initially managed by an external fixator and which was later on converted to ring fixator and alignment was achieved using hexaport. This was his final result. Another case of distal tibia open fracture. So patient was diabetic and he had an infected wound. So we treated him by uh, inf lizard ring fixator plus antibiotic cement beads, beads as they are visible here. And this patient also healed very well with some alignment and healing was good. The posterior cortex, it has thickened and over the due course, it was again, uh, healing was good. Uh, and in the due course, the antibiotic beads were also extracted. Again, a, another male patient with diabetic patient or late presenting infected open knee uh, with a, a bad fracture of distal femur. He was again treated by software guided realignment and it is routing fixator. This is his final result. So there was good healing of and good alignment of both the cortices. And again, as Dr. Manish sir and Vikas sir have already shown many cases of Zenu virus. and virus. This was a case of Zenu uh, virus both with both tibial as well as femoral component. And she was again treated as by software guided realignment, both uh, for femoral component as well as tibial component. And this was her final result. This is a case of 12, 20 year old male with childhood physical injury in distal femur. There was a shortening and there was a virus deformity in distal femur. So thus, uh, uh, she was again treated by Elizabeth Ring fixator and some lengthening. So we did lengthening in proximal, uh, proximal femur as well as some lengthening in distal femur using Elizabeth Ring uh, this hexaport. So we could, uh, as Dr. Jensen was asking, so lengthening with the hexaport and proximal lengthening was using state roads. 
there was some angulation in proximal femur um, due to some either uh, frame stability related issue but we could achieve learning and good correction also alignment is also fairly comparable in both the lower limbs sometimes uh, other factors also play so <clears throat> this was a case of distal tibial physal injury due to open fracture with very bad soft tissues poor soft tissues the soft tissue compliance was very less the joint line was barely visible or invisible but we uh, tried to preserve his ankle joint and blindly correct this deformity so in the due course the middle soft tissues they gave way there was an ulceration which was treated by sequential dressings and in ultimately the correction was achieved and patient has uneventful healing uh, over the due course of my experience with uh, software guided alignment inaccurate measures measurements in the you know the ortho, ortho icu that fix and all the software guided alignment they require accurate measurements so inaccurate measurement give uh, rise to failed correction maneuver so measurement has to be very accurate otherwise appliance uh, ortho icu or the deck fix they are perfect in nature they they usually don't fail except the measurements or the uh, subjective component just to summarize software guided realignments they are good for periarticular deformities they have reliable and reproducible results they have ease of maneuver they execute complex maneuver for multiplanar deformities in a single go so they are easy they save efforts they save uh, efforts and the complex cal calculations of conventional maneuvers uh, there is some space for interpersonal variations and human error of conventional method so this is also eliminated in these maneuvers again i request viewers for the uh, raise to register for asami con 2023 i thank pritish sir thank you very much it was an excellent presentation very difficult cases yet again i would say as difficult as what uh, the other seniors have shown and uh, you worked very well uh, towards it so uh, may i request uh, Uh, the faculty if anyone has any question uh, uh, shamshul sir are you tracking the uh, uh, the other chat box also where viewers also might be having some questions yes uh, there are no question on youtube yet or other channels okay okay so uh, i would request uh, the senior faculty uh, dr manish daman sir are you there sir i am there i am there yes sir yes sir uh, sir uh, what about what could you make out of british sir's presentation sir excellent presentation excellent cases and i Thanks, think sir, sir. Uh, everything was uh, he is a very you know uh, he is doing lot of cases in molana azar and i feel that uh, once you know the device na it is becomes very easy whatever case any deformity you can correct it only thing is the learning curve you have to learn how to use the device and calculation once it is achieved there is no so jain sir was asking Yeah, there is a question in the no, chat yes, box. Sir. You can use it. I'm Dyer. using it on almost more than ninety percent. No, there is a question in chat box. Uh, ch chat box by Dr. Jayan that uh, he faces the problem of reference wire infection, as Dr. Preetish also had in this thing. See, I have yes. never, I don't face this problem. One thing is that uh, I always use Pitker's wire. I'm not, you know. i'm not a proponent of pitker or i'm not uh, you know doing their advertisement but i tell you one thing i burned many fingers my fingers you know when i use it uh, non pitker local implants so i think always use uh, they are very high standard to use pitker wires and your technique of tensioning should be i never uh, i very very rarely i retension my wire i never do that because the tensioning technique has to be very perfect and uh, don't use uh, you know inferior implant the main problem occurs when you use the inferior implant thank you sir sir uh, sir, when, dr vikas sir dr. when vikas it is ayushman hmm? when it is ayushman you can't be uh, a chooser of uh, pitkar implant and you will always uh, have infection and you will always retension your wire i'm telling you at least what you could do use the wire pitkar wire and the wire fixation clamp of pitkar and then rings you can use it uh, because 
uh, I burnt my finger. I know I used to use the different, different companies. People used to come and then I, what is happening? Because there is a mismatch of holes. There is mismatch of ring diameter. You can see two rings. They are different in thickness. So I think it is very standardized. And yeah, I know there is a problem. But Ayushman, they give uh, money for implant, na? Sir, it's kam It's only 3,500. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, 3,500 for assembly is too less. Too less, yes. And in period implant, there is a big problem. Don't do it, don't do it. The patient is also a problem, you are also a I am not, uh, you know, not doing advertisement for Pitkar, but it is high standard. Even I went to Bangladesh, now Russians was also telling, the Russian surgeons and the Bangladeshi that their wires are very good. Pitkar wire. No, I, I think Manish, in addition to the wire, the reference wire are usually extra articular and ah. they bear the maximum strain when you yeah. ask them to move. So they are bound to get infected. I think if you see the paper, spinter infection varies from 10% to 100%. I think if you, what criteria you take. So I think uh, unless it's a severe deep infection, uh, spinter infections can be easily controlled. And what I use is teach the patient himself the technique of earbud. You yeah, that, that that is uh, that is uh, being taught, sir. Yeah, ear but so, in case of uh, CVA, I also use gentamicin injection if I feel that you know. Gentamicin injection is really also good, and uh, and tensioning is important. Uh -huh. The Elizabeth, no, what Manisha said is totally true. That uh, I think among the laser manufacturers, Pitkar is best, but uh, you know there are some constraints with everyone. So, but uh, tensioning should be good. And I never do retensioning. I break the wire at the junction. What Herzenberg <laughs> has been doing uh, with the uh, decreases the problems, the wire catching on the clothes and other things. No, the, I also do it the Herzenberg style. Yeah, what we were doing in the uh, last course. So, uh, pin track infection, I think there is still uh, there is no answer that how can you prevent basically. See, the technique of wire tensioning, I think mm -hmm. uh, that is the mainstay. <laughs> You tension it well, it does not move. Uh, and uh, energy um, uh, drilling, drill and stop that uh, what Dr. Uh, teaches to everyone. That uh, while uh, everyone is uh, doing pain for the Eliza, uh, drill and stop, uh, drill and stop. If the the uh, um, drilling is there, so uh, there is less, very less chances of pain if the cleaning is there. Your voice is breaking, Kisha. No, he's saying that if the no, you he follows your technique of no drilling energy. and stopping, uh -huh. yeah, low energy is. drilling. It's not my technique. It's Elizabeth. Drilling should be in the low energy, right? Do not. So I think we have to follow the principles of Elizabeth or whatever. Yes, definitely, sir. Definitely, sir. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pritish and uh, the senior faculty for this active participation yet again. And now uh, moving on to the final speaker of the day, Dr. Kumar Keshav. Uh, Dr. Keshav, can you please go ahead now? With the PPT, almost everything has been covered by uh, our learned teachers, sir. Uh, I'm just sharing with my uh, short experience uh, with physical injury at the ankle. So, uh, ankle um, because of the physical injury, uh, does the my uh, screen is visible to everyone? Hello, is my yeah. slide is yeah. visible? Uh, it's visible, but no slides. It's just a now it's okay. I think some internet issue. Uh, sir, yes. Limited and in, uh, internet access. Slide, is it visible to everyone? Yes, yes. Go ahead. So, I'm uh, presenting in, uh, experience with my uh, dealing with this uh, physical injury case. I uh, hello. Yeah, visible. 
कैसे गोहेड यू नॉट ऑडिबल माय टॉपिक इज टू इक्वलेट टू द फाइजिल इंजरी दो दिस फाइजिल इंजरी इज वेल्ड सो ऑफेंडली वी सी द चाइल्ड विथ percent of the child uh, which suffers injury there are uh, to the physical injury so mostly they heal with the uh, and the fracture union complication occurs in a 2 to 14 days and growth rest is very rare what we see is that ankle is very commonest to have uh, the deformity physical injury we can assess that uh, physical injury X-ray or the we can do MRI or CT scan to see the bar formation or the uh, physical bar evaluation for us. We see the uh, we classify the physical injury by classification that uh, everyone is knowing of. So what I got the case was uh, I got a child that uh, she was a ten year old girl child presented. Equinus gate, and while observing, we saw that length discrepancy also. What had uh, she is, is a trauma while playing at the age of six, and with a plaster cast. And uh, as per their uh, father, parents said, she had some wound over there also. So over uh, conservative time, the wound had healed, and the united but gradually she started to develop equality and the limb length discrepancy also had occurred and for past months, uh, their parents and father noticed that she is having a during the covid time but during the covid time they were not attend any hospital or so so this led to happen as you can clearly see that in this photo also there is equinus deformity Virus and there is some limb length discrepancy. So we evaluate this patient for infection. Some uh, is there any latent in all the metabolic profile and blood investigation? So child had uh, some vitamin D deficiency, calcium. That metabolic profile uh, correction with the oral supplementation and detailed X-ray. Was done to see the what the deformity she is having. X-ray on the X-ray we saw and we calculated that uh, uh, there is a varus deformity of around uh, 32 degree, and uh, posterior angulation was there was uh, around 28, and there was limb seven centimeter. So we did the pre. The patient for limb length, uh, limb lengthening, along with the continuous correction for the angular deformity, and we apply, we counsel the software-based deformity correction using. So, in drop, what we did was fibular osteotomy, and osteotomy at the colas was done, and depth using one ring distal to the cortical. Ring proximal to the corticoatomic side, spanning the whole. The data was fed in the software, which is available on. Has been already discussed that we are having several uh, instrumentation, SUV or DFX or DSF other DFX in this. Due X-rays were done. Child was motivated for the full weight bearing and. With the support or without support, like we can see in this, for the limb length discrepancy, we used a shoe raise for this, and gradually shoe raise was removed. This correction was in one month of phase, with for which we did the lengthening also and the, the angular. Depth fix was once removed when the correction was achieved. This with the threaded rod, full weight being was increased. Consolidation phase. Once the consolidation achieved, technically we remove the 
depth fix we can see easily that uh, there is a correction in the equinus and limb length similar thing this was say confirmation was done with the map uh, calculation comparing with the other uh, limb x ray also i feel that uh, software based correction is very easy to uh, do simultaneous multiplanar deformity correction also and the for the limb lengthening also and i'm just the bd for this so this is the final limb you can see also result but the it is visible to everyone no now it is is that if you do the adequate planning with the uh in the counsel the parents accordingly uh depth fix so all the software based correction is very uh, uh that it is very uh, doctors friendly to uh, do all the need in a single go careful planning and persistent follow up highly motivated patient and the parents aid to yield the targeted result thank you thank you <clears throat> thank you dr kumar keshav uh, in spite of technical challenges at your end you have managed to pull it off so uh, nice cases and well executed that's all i would say and uh, uh, may i now request um, uh, uh, our senior experts uh, professor gupta sir professor vikas gupta sir sir any comments or any critical comments or anything on the cases as uh, shown by dr keshav no very interesting case and uh, even i have been doing uh, uh, the ankle cases in fact i have used this hexapod in a equinus deformity stretching the soft tissues so i think uh, keshav you stop your screen sharing so uh, this hexapod actually has, hexapod has made our life much easier actually whatever what you use def fix or suv and uh, it's an excellent device for uh, uh, multiplanar deformities but it can also be used for a uniplanar deformities like lengthening the uh, the only thing which i have been stressing repeatedly is that one must follow the principles of elizo that frame should be stable and the stability should be maintained throughout the treatment period the failure of stability is the cause of poor regenerate you can have poor regenerate with suv with hexapod also because uh, hexapod is not going to give the the good regenerate unless the frame is stable so follow the principles of the elizero and uh, this the software will only give what you are giving to the software so make sure your data is good and as manisha said i always make sure that pitkar at least for uh, maybe another few cases till i can do myself i always take the help of the pitkar guy who sits with me who helps me in exactly giving the right uh, the parameters basic software it's not difficult and probably i feel that our younger generation can pick up much faster than us like yeah. dr manish can uh, is army man he can do much faster and uh, nothing uh, high five is not a space science i am doing my all <laughs> i am doing all my cases by myself i yeah, have the help of any pitkar guy i know that uh, you are doing yourself and uh, even keshav is doing himself yes so all the cases which we have done keshav was with me only <laughs> yes so, the only i think rider is the cost 
right now is the cost and uh, the availability and uh, but one has to be very meticulous yes that's all i want to say thank you sir sir uh, dhavan sir dr dhavan sir your views no this he did a very good presentation and uh, very very nice case so i think uh, what dr vikas has told i think the younger generation will pick up fast and i think they will be better than us so i think uh, we should encourage more and more people to do this thing but you know one thing very important you have to know your elizaro so that if you do not know your elizaro and directly start doing this thing you will fail miserably that is there you have to I know the principles before they do this they must have the certificate of doing attended basic course or advanced See, it is like this that suppose I uh, want to train a pilot and I don't train him with the basic aircraft and directly start training him in F-16. It is going to crash. So you have to learn from the very basic. The person who has knowledge of the conventional laser all of where to put the hinge, where to put the distraction uh, rod and how to tension wire, how what, what are the biomechanics of the frame. That is very important. Is not that uh, depth fix is important. If your frame is not good, your depth fix will fail. You cannot blame depth fix then. So you have to have, before you're doing, you have to be very, very, you know, educated about Elizarov. You should train yourself with someone who is doing it and spend time with him at, at least two, two to three people and then you start doing it once you are very confident. What people do that they don't read the book of Elizarov, any basic book, and they directly start doing it. So they, they don't know the principles. So you have to know that. Thank you very much for those uh, very nice words, sir. very prophetic. And um, at the end, again, uh, like all the previous speakers, including Dr. Pitish also, spoke about requesting everybody, all of us, and telling others also to register for the upcoming Samicon. 2023 being organized by our beloved Dr. Jain Sharma sir at Indore. So I hope this message will be passed across uh, to as many people and uh, we should we should try and register as early as we can. It's we hardly any done. time left now. Uh, for so, the viewers, uh, Manish, for the viewers, uh, Assam, I would really recommend AsamiCon because you know there are so many experts coming at one place and so many workshops and the whole basic Elizra will be explained. So if you really want to learn, see, you cannot learn from the workshop, but you know exactly that what is happening, uh, what, uh, you know, uh, how to prevent complication, what I should do right, I should not do wrong. So these things, you know, educate you too much and your really mind start working. So I always, all I recommend all the youngsters to come and join, uh, definitely join the Asami Khan Indore. It's a very, very powerful tool to uh, take you towards the deformity correction. Thank you, sir. So, sir, do I have the permission of seniors to call the meeting off, sir? If, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank so, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, dear viewers who have been watching this live. And uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Ruta Kulkarni, ma'am couldn't make it uh, at the last moment. She had some commitments. But nevertheless, uh, on behalf of her, I would uh, like to extend a big thanks to all the senior faculty as well as all the viewers over here. And it was a great show. We will uh, continue this thing next month again uh, with two new states, probably Tamil Nadu and uh, uh, West Bengal. So uh, we'll keep you apprised of the same. Thank you so much, sir. Dr. Vikas, sir, Dr. Dhaman, sir, Jayan, sir, Dr. Pritish and your team. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Kumar, your your registration is due. <laughs> Kumar Keshav, please. <laughs> you register him. Yes, I'll be there, sir. I'll be there. Yeah, I'm waiting for your registration. <laughs> I'll make him register. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good evening. I'll be there, okay. sir. I'll be there. Okay. Oh, good, good night. 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 Good night